The United States Army is discharging immigrant recruits after promising them a path to citizenship in exchange for their service. Now, many of them are struggling with abrupt removals and canceled contracts. David Begno has been following the story of one Ph.D. candidate who was abruptly discharged. I ask you, American people, the people I love, is there any way or is there any method more honorable than getting citizenship by serving this great country? That question comes from a Chinese-born, American-educated Ph.D. student who's now teaching at Texas A&M University. His name is Pan Shu Zhao. What fascinated you about America? I would say the first word is freedom, and the second word, democracy. Zhao enlisted in the U.S. Army Reserve through the MAVNI program, military accessions vital to the national interest. Started under President Bush to help fight the war on terror, it offered non-citizens a fast track to citizenship, if they had critical language and medical skills needed by the military. Zhao speaks Mandarin. He enlisted in 2016, right before the program was suspended under President Obama, and just as tougher screenings were mandated for recruits. They ordered so many background checks that they destroyed the program. Immigration attorney Margaret Stock, a former Army lieutenant colonel who helped create the MAVNI program, says not enough resources were provided for the additional investigations, resulting in a 10-year backlog. She's representing Zhao. I didn't get my clearance, and I asked her why, and they refused to tell me why. A Pentagon spokeswoman told CBS News Mavni was suspended in 2016 because it was vulnerable to an unacceptable level of risk from insider threats such as espionage, terrorism, and other criminal activity. I have never violated any legal rules. I have never been associated with any foreign forces. And how could I fail this? Probably because the only thing I have I'm a Chinese. I was born in China. My parents are Chinese people. How could I change that? He passed a background check to teach at Texas A&M and to visit the White House. I wish I can have at least have some certain degree of justice for this. You want an explanation at least? Yeah, at least for that. And David Begno joins us now from McAllen, Texas. David, how will being discharged from the Army affect the immigration status of Zhao and others like him? Well, it's a good question. So first of all, we asked Jald, are you going to get deported? And he says, I don't know. I'm waiting to hear back. He's working with an attorney. In fact, it's Mark, the woman from in that store. Uh, but he said, quite frankly, look, look, if I get deported and go back to China, I'm afraid they're going to see me uh, as a traitor. Because as someone who swore an oath to a foreign military, uh, China will not take kindly to that. There are other people that we spoke with, specifically one woman who's been on active duty for the U.S. Army for the last two years. She's worried about being sent back to the Ukraine. Elaine, all of these people have questions. None of them have that answer. Well, what legal recourse, David, do discharged immigrant recruits have? Um, they, they, they really don't. I mean, look, quite frankly, uh, Zhao went to his superiors, said why. They said, we don't know, and we can't tell you. That's essentially what he was told. So he's working with Miss Stock. But again, these are people who are not citizens. Uh, Mr. Zhao, who you just saw, came here on a student visa. He's still still teaching at Texas A&M University, uh, but he's unclear as to what legal recourse he has. He's waiting to get advice. And, and just to point out, these people were not promised citizenship. They were promised a fast track to citizenship. Just an important clarification. Well, well former Obama, Obama National Security Advisor Susan Rice denounced this news as outrageous and shameful on Twitter. But this program was ended while uh, President Obama was still in office. Would these discharges be happening if the program was still in place? Possibly. I mean, look, the, the reality is, Elaine, these people were discharged because they were told they failed their background check. Now, the critics will say the failure of the background check is just being used as an excuse. Margaret Stock, who again helped to create the program, says that in 2016, uh, under President Obama, they put into place tougher restrictions, tougher background checks, more questions. The problem is, Elaine, it's take in nearly two years to go through these background checks. So everybody's been in a limbo, so to speak. And that's why we're seeing these people being kicked out of the military right now under President Trump. It is not fair to blame Mr. Trump for what is happening now. Again, the program was suspended under Mr. Obama. The question is, why did it take so long to process background checks? And, you know, again, with Mr. Jowett noting he passed a background check to teach at Texas A&M, even went to visit the White House and passed a background check. Was it ground check for the military 
that didn't pass muster. Hmm. All right. David Begno reporting from McAllen, Texas for us. David, thanks very much. You bet.